Welcome to the podcast, Fanoy. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. We're excited to have you here. I, we just kind of hooked up uh, a couple weeks ago for the first time in a little while. Um, I was thinking, you know, who should I get on the podcast? And I was going through my LinkedIn and I was like, Fanoy Butler, I had met you a long <laughs> time ago when I interned at Beck Partners. Yes. Um, and so we had a, a connection there and went out for lunch a couple weeks ago and, and here we are. So... No, absolutely. And in, in, especially in this business, and I'm sure uh, absolutely in yours, uh, relationships are very key. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting along, not making bad blood between people is really good. <laughs> yes. Uh, Pensacola, you know, I, a lot of people have been saying this since the revitalization of Pensacola is that Pensacola is a uh, small, big city. Because, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there's only a few degrees of separation by a few people. Yep. Uh, you got to be careful who you talk to about who. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll get back to them. It's yeah. funny. No, but absolutely. it's, I enjoy that about Pensacola. I really do. That it's, it's a small town feel mm-hmm. um, with some big city amenities, which is nice. Um, so, what, for people who don't know you, go ahead and give us a brief uh, overview of, of your past and kind of what brought you to Pensacola to stay and um, where you're at right now, your current position. Okay, well, great. Uh, so my name's Fanoy Butler. For, so for everybody that's here in Pensacola, they, whenever I introduce myself, they always hear Vanoy for Vanoy's Tires. <laughs> uh, not plug for Vanoy, but uh, it's, it's Fanoy. We'll get him to sponsor this episode. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a uh, family name. Uh, so I, I uh, got down to Pensacola in 05. Uh, the Navy brought me here. I was a... Uh, in the military at the time, and they brought me down here for my first tour of duty uh, over here at the schoolhouse. I was a lead instructor for my rate, uh, which was an ABE uh, for launching catapults and arresting gear. Interesting. And so I worked flight deck of aircraft carriers for a few years. Then uh, the one left here, uh, went back up to Norfolk, then came back down for my last tour over Whiting Field, retired out of there. And then, um, and let me back up even. For that, so in 05, 06, I, I was here and I had a friend that was getting um, displaced from her job. And she knew I always had a passion for finance. And she goes, Hey, our, our company's getting bought out. They're having some financial planners come in and talk to us about options with our investments or money uh, for us to do something with. Would you mind coming with me? You know, here's a woman that's walking into an office primarily with all men yeah. looking at her, and she has money sitting in her hands. Like somebody <laughs> that I know, come with me. Yeah. So I went with her, and uh, wound up striking up a very good relationship with uh, two gentlemen, and one of them who uh, I now work with, Robert Mills, uh, who's now the founding partner of Riverside Wealth Advisors, where I work. And uh, so I became a client of his officially. Uh, and I had been investing on my own for probably the previous 10 years that I met with him and he really kind of opened my eyes to a whole bunch of things I was missing. Hmm. And once I did that, I I said, you know what, you can make a living doing this. I I never really put two and two together. I knew the investing portion, but I never knew the, maybe the financial coaching session is kind of how I deem what my job is now. And so once I came back down and I knew I was going to retire here, Chose my last set of orders here, and once we got down here, I went and talked to him and go, hey, I'd like to come see if this is something I, I could pursue, uh, s- see if this is something I would enjoy doing, because what is the legwork of, of getting your yeah, clients Yeah, I just base. wanted to feel it out just a little bit, I'm so, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, he told me what to do, so I came in, started doing that, got some of my licenses and credentials together, and once I retired, uh, he goes, hey, I'm going to break off and form my own group which is Riverside. He was with another firm at the time. Mm-hmm. And so he goes, would you would you come with me? I said, absolutely. I, I, I have no dog yeah, in the fight. Cool. Sure, yeah, let's go. Sure. <laughs> and uh, so so he got me into that. So now I run the Pensacola office for Riverside Wealth Advisors. And uh, so we're actually in the process of uh, – actually, I found out this morning we're getting ready to interview three more advisors to come on board Wow. So uh, for this office. and we Going have, quickly. Yeah, we have four offices within the state of Florida – and uh, actually, Wednesday, me and my partner, um, who's a CPA here, me and him are actually flying over to uh, St. Augustine for our team building uh, cool. with our group. So we're going to – it's good when one of your partners has a plane. You can just fly, oh, hey, let's nice. fly over. We don't have to make that drive. Yeah, to Jacksonville. No, that's really, really nice. Oh, we yeah. need to find a partner with a plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> find some reason to partner up with somebody who has a plane. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. So where are the other offices in Florida? Uh, over to St. Augustine, uh, Palatka, and uh, – Fleming Island, so it's a uh, it's a uh, 
It's growing. And it's very interesting. It's interesting to see how the business is uh, formed, especially on our side, because we're an independent firm, which makes us very unique and different uh, than the uh, box cutter companies that Mm -hmm. are around everywhere that sure. everybody can see. Okay. Well, actually, let's go ahead and dive into that for people who aren't familiar then. Um, what makes you different as your own you know, independent firm? What can you do that maybe a, a, a bigger box company couldn't do? Sure. No, great question. It, it's, uh, I had, actually, I had three uh, referrals today, and I spent most of the morning on the phone call talking explaining to this exactly this Explaining this exactly Good. that. All right. Awesome. Uh, so for us, uh, when Robert worked at his previous firm, and he and he was very successful, and he he did a great job doing what he did for them. He but he always felt kind of strong armed that he worked. He was a captive agent, and which means you have to sell only the products that this company sells. Mm-hmm. And he he really felt kind of hamstrung by that. And I had no knowledge of that. Not not that they're bad products, but that he these are all you can offer. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just if I may interject, it's if you're trying to help somebody with their overall financial profile, Mm -hmm. then you need to have the freedom to be able to, to do that for them and not just pick from a, B and C of the things that may, may help them. Yeah. So, so once he decided to go off on his own, uh, he goes, "Uh, you know what? I want to make a very unique company and a gentleman that he wanted to team up with, uh, Charlie Douglas, who's a lawyer uh, and also a financial advisor, but his primary practice is law. Primary income, I guess, is law. Uh, <laughs> is uh, they go, hey, let's set up a firm that will be a one-stop shop. So we want to be interdisciplinary. So that means we have CPAs, lawyers, and financial advisors all in house. Hmm. And the problem that you run into, uh, that I would see that others could run into, is that I have a client that comes in. He pre- he or she presents me their materials. And I give them this suggestion. And before we even do that, I'll, I'll sit there and tell them, if anybody else is in your life financially that you go to get advice from. So, you know, if a husband and a wife, both of you come. Because if you go home and go, hey, I'm just going to share with her what we talked about, you're not telling her the full story. Mm-hmm. Or you're leaving out a whole bunch of key aspects that we went over that you're assuming that he or she already knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So bring them with you. If you have a CPA or accountant that you go for advice, because then you walk into their office and go, hey, my financial advisor, Fanoi, is having me do X, Y, and Z. And, and the financial advisor is like, uh, that's not good. You shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, why is he saying that? Mm-hmm. You know what? You know, so so because he's he or she's looking at it from a certain perspective, for tax reasons for that year, for and what they believe. Sure, they need the complete picture. Yeah, so so they want so Robert wanted to set up a firm that would be a one-stop shop. We have CPAs, lawyers and financial advisors underneath one roof. We all talk to each other and we can get mm-hmm. into the room or Zoom call and have the discussion and have the answer within 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, here is the situation. Does everybody see the exact same path? Yes. Okay, that's the way we're going to go. That's incredibly valuable. Yeah, it is. Y- yes, and, and saves a lot of people a lot of time and heartache. I'm sure it does. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I love that. That's cool. And, I mean, it's cool that you um, were able to benefit from that um, from him, and that's kind of what got you presumably into it in the first place. You know, you saw that there was value there, yeah. and then you're able to turn around and, and help other people with that as well. That's exciting. Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's very interesting. I, I try to uh, – I'm getting a little bit better at it because I take – unfortunately, I take a lot of things personal. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, somebody comes in my office, and, and I probably almost immediately could tell them you need to do X, Y, and Z. But if you don't walk them through the process – they're going to balk and just go run out the room screaming because they're like, no, I have, you know, I, because we're, we're all pr- kind of programmed because we watch TV or social media mm-hmm. and you come out of high school or college or trade school and you go, okay, I'm, and, let, and let's pretend that you're, you're one of these that, uh, and millennials are actually pretty good at it. Go, Hey, I need to prepare for retirement. Mm-hmm. And so by the numbers, they're actually doing better than most mm. go. Okay. Well, my company has a 401k. I'm a start. Awesome. Great. So they start going, well, you do that for 40 or 50 years. Now all of a sudden you have to change from accumulation to now taking disbursements from it. Mm -hmm. And it's a completely different game Mm -hmm. and people 
if you go, hey, all right, well, we need to move from this product to this product, and it's a completely different animal. Mm. It's treated differently. It looks differently. It talks differently. And people go, uh, that's different. I don't like it. That's yeah. a little nerve wracking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it's outside what they're comfortable with. Yeah. So, and, and this is one of the conversations we had with, we, we hired a, um, uh, a LinkedIn coach to help us build our LinkedIn profiles. And, and, and he, he taught us this, uh, you know, no like, and trust. You got to get to know people to like them and get them to trust you. And, and that's very much true. So, so this business, uh, whether you're independent or working anywhere else, people do business with, I mean, you can walk up and down, Palifax and find a dozen financial advisors. Yeah, I, I mean, there's yeah. But I remember talking about this with you. It's the same for realtors. I yeah. mean, and everybody pretty much offers essentially the same kind of services. Sure. There's different nuances, but um, so continue with what you're saying. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I exactly what I mean. So I mean, so we kind of look at it as the as the aspect of okay, what makes us different? Yeah. And two, how can we market ourselves? within the guidelines that FINRA allows us to market ourselves, uh, you know, because I can't put a billboard up mm. down on the side of the highway and say, come see Fanoi. Yeah. Uh, that, that'd be, uh, not sure why, but <laughs> we can't do that. Uh, so, so, it, it, so people have to get to know you. If they, if they know you, they'd like you to trust you. They'll start walking in. Cause when you turn around and for, I had a guy, I had, a, had a, another financial advisor made this comment to me and I use it every once in a while is when somebody comes into your office, especially if, they're, if they've are if they never worked with a financial advisor before, it's like opening up your underwear drawer. And sometimes it's messy and mm, sometimes yeah. it's perfect. Uh, but it can be very nerve-wracking because nobody wants – because here's the dirty. Yeah, you're I, exposing your, yourself yeah. and your financial profile to, to somebody to outside. Everything. I mean, yeah. I, I sit there. I mean, we look at your wills. We look at your legal documents. Uh, you know, so I look at all aspects of your life, you know. Yeah. Are you leaving money to your children? Are you not? Are you leaving? Uh, I have clients that have cut their children out of their wills. I've had, you know. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, all aspects. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is, a, if you like working with people and getting to know people, it can be a great job. It, it can be very nerve wracking doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause I, ha- I have a couple of clients that they'll, they'll reach out to me. And as soon as I see their name on the phone, I'm like, Oh God, I don't really don't want to take this phone call. <laughs> yeah. This could be painful. Same yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's not that they're, they're, their investments are doing fine. They're just, they're, they're very, very needy. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. could, that could be very, very stressful. On me. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And Anytime I, you're dealing with people, you yeah. run the risk of having clients like that. <laughs> and you just have to take a little bit of extra, time and attention and, and yeah. usher them a little more through the process than mm-hmm. some people may. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, that's something that we we're trying our best to um, tailor a little more to the needs of each individual client because some people, and you and I talked about this, some people, they don't, they don't, they just want you to do your job. They don't mm-hmm. really want to be updated or, you know, just call me if there's a problem or if you need something from me. Yeah. And then some people, I, I had a lady reach out to me one time and she was like, it's been 24 hours since I've heard from you and mm-hmm. I expect more. Yeah. And I was like, on one hand, I was like, now listen here, <laughs> I'm busy. But on the other hand, I thought, well, if that's what she wants, then it's my job to make her feel comfortable during this process. Sure. Um, so you, you just got to do what you got to do with, with those clients and, and treat them how they want to be treated. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually, uh, speaking of that, I had a, um, uh, so I'm working with a young lady. She's actually in, uh, she's overseas right now. She's a military officer overseas. And uh, she's in the process of transferring to a new duty station. And the last email she sent me was a few days ago. Then she emailed me again this morning, and I responded to her, and she responded back. And I go, hey, how was uh, – she was going to do a virtual tour because she's on the other side of the planet doing a virtual tour for a con- condo or townhouse that mm-hmm. she's getting ready to make an offer on. Mm-hmm which is stressful enough, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Hey, I'm gonna buy this sight unseen on the other side of the planet. Yeah. That's scary. And so <laughs> I go, Hey, how happy new year. Oh, how did the, uh, tour go? Mm-hmm. And, uh, Oh, and you know, within some of our business com- questions that I had to answer for, and she responded back to me. She goes, my realtor's gone silent on me again. So I'm not sure what's uh, going on. I'm not, I'm not that is so frustrating from. for me to hear. I'm oh, like, yeah. I oh. was just meeting a client. Um, actually, on New Year's Day, we were meeting some contractors at a house we have under contract. And they, I'm literally working with them because I'm working with this woman's daughter. And um, 
she had been complaining to her daughter that she couldn't get a hold of a realtor. I mean, it's a busy time right now in the market. If you if there's a house that comes on the market and it's priced right, it will be gone within 24 to 48 hours, easy, with multiple offers. Wow. So she's finding houses that she wants to go look at, mm -hmm. and her realtor won't call her back. <laughs> and so she called me, and she said, hey, you're working with my daughter, and you know she really... Um, has enjoyed working with you in your communication and I, I have a house I want to go see I met her out there in the next like three or four hours She put in a contract full price and we we got the house under contract. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, so wow. it's like you're just missing that, out on deals. Yeah, what you're, you're just missing yeah. out on deals exactly yeah. that was the one house that she was like, okay I have I am fed up with this guy who won't call me back So I got to just walk in and get a contract in one day. Yeah, I mean that was really nice, but it was like that's your only job is to be there for your clients. Yeah, you <laughs> what, what do, foot. Now, now, this is interesting. So why do you think that, do you, and, and this is another uh, extension of the conversation me and you had over lunch, is uh, do you think that those people that fall within that realm, uh, and it's probably the same for my industry, is because of scale? Or do you think they're just so busy that, hey, I'm chasing, I have six other houses that I am showing seven days a week, and I mm. can't. I, I don't have Tom Tom. Yeah, I think some of it may be that. But to be honest, I think the realtors who are the busiest are the ones who are the best at juggling multiple deals and multiple clients. You you see anybody who's doing a lot of deals or has scaled up to a, a massive amount of volume per year, and they have systems and processes for every single thing that they do. Mm -hmm. So no client is just getting lost in the works. That's, yeah. I in my opinion, it's... It's the part timers or people who don't treat it like a business yeah. who few they get that call from that client that they don't want to talk to and they decline it rather than just answering it and having the conversation they don't want to have. Sure. Um, so I think a lot of times it's just realtors, especially I don't know how it is for your industry, yeah. but people just being lazy and they they're like, I don't feel like showing a house today, so I'm just not going to respond. And I think the people who really have a lot of scale and are doing a lot of business treat every client like the potential deal that they are. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, that's just my, my view on it. But. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you talked about this I, and I, I'm cause we have a couple of internals that we work with and, and they're all remote for me. Uh, they're over in a Palaka office. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I've gotten to the point now where I'm becoming overwhelmed mm. and, and I was pushing some stuff off to them, which mm -hmm. I, they didn't mind doing, but they're now starting to get overwhelmed. They uh, go, Hey, really? Floyd, our, okay. our primary job is to do this stuff, not yeah. to do yours. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. So, I, so I'm getting to the point where I, I need to hire my own EA okay. and, and start doing, get, get their ramped up, uh, to start doing some of my internal paperwork. That's it, it just becomes a, it, cause it's a pay, it's a large, large paperwork shuffle and, and the new reg b's not that that means anything to you but have come out with moving old 401ks over mm. which is a big part of our business mm. big it's a large portion of our business it's becoming more and more painful to do mm. uh, to almost to the point time where consuming for you almost to the point where you're like I, I don't want to even do this. Is this even worth it anymore? Yeah, because the, <laughs> yeah. the regulations that are that you have to jump Very through, stringent. Uh, right. and, and they're painful mm -hmm. uh, because all these four hundred and one k companies are virtual and are online. So they talk to a human about, hey, I, do you offer Roth conversions with your four hundred and one k? I need to know what's your annual <laughs> fees, and and except for getting a prospectus from them and then going through it page by page, going, hey, what is this? I need I need literally two numbers from you. Can you oh, not tell man. me these numbers? Yikes. Um, well, then I guess maybe I'm not allowing enough. It sounds like for you, you're struggling with just being busy, you know, having a lot of clients. So maybe that is something that I just haven't, you know, I, I don't see. Mm -hmm. I think I have a view of like, well, if you're not responding, then, um, you know, you just need to just respond. And, and I, but we did talk about as far as you hiring like an assistant. I know that's kind of the next step for you. Yeah. Um, I think that that's something that's helped us definitely. Um, if I can't respond to somebody they know they can at least get a hold of him mm -hmm. and then at least they're in contact with somebody yeah. um so i think that that has helped us definitely a lot yeah yeah if, if well th there's some communication going out i mean because you know I, I do some joint work with robert um and then in his ea <laughs> and so so if i respond to an email i'm ccing her on it and, okay. and sometimes she'll respond to the husband or wife or whoever we're working with. And, and, and I can see the trails of email by the time I get back that I can read through that's everything great. Yeah. and I can do all the paperwork and that's yeah. fine. Uh, but it, it does start becoming a, 
um, because you're, if you're with us, we're you know we're doing it. We our goal is to do a semi-annual review. Every, so every six months. So after I become your advisor and we have everything set up, in six months we're getting back together. Yeah. And at max once a year, hmm. just to make sure nothing's falling off the rails. And we have to keep reviewing because yeah. things change. You know, sure, yeah. you're, you're single this year. Next year you got married. The following year you bought a house. The following year you have a child. Mm-hmm. Your life huge, has changed. Huge, huge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. So uh, and you and you got fired from your job. You got a promotion. And your spouse has picked up a job. I mean, it's oh, a completely different financial profile. Oh, absolutely. And so, so as you keep revisiting this, go, hey, we need to increase this. Hey, you're now married. Hey, even though your spouse is maybe a stay at home parent, you can, you have investment obligations that you're allowed to do for her for retirement. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though she has no income, she can, you can do it for her. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so I mean, there's always opportunities, but you have to keep meeting with them and you know, you start hitting the number where your, your, your reviews are taking up three, four days a week. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, where are your new clients coming from? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, so I mean that, so it starts getting a little bogged down. So you need to vary the systems in place and we're, and we're pretty good at that. Uh, you know, we, we know as soon as trigger A gets pulled, B's next in line and C. There you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's an ever evolving pursuit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's never perfect. Yeah. And, and the virtual thing is really kind of kicked off everything because I was already uh, I was already probably in January this past year I was probably already 30 35% virtual mm. and we were already doing virtual meetings because our main offices are on the other side of the state yeah so we were already doing we used go to meeting at one time then we, we went down to zoom and then Microsoft teams yeah so we, we're sticking with those two right now <clears throat> and uh so I was already probably 35, 40% online. And I have a couple of other advisors that I know here in the area who are 90, 95% virtual. Wow. And and all their client, the bulk of their clients are all here in the area. Wow. And they're like, don't come to my office. Unless you want to see me, don't come here. Yeah. I just don't want to see you. So, yeah. so you know, it, and well, it especially takes a lot less time to jump on a Zoom call though than. Oh, absolutely. And, and especially if you think about today's professionals, most couples or a good portion, especially white collar, both both parents are working. Mm-hmm. They're on either side of Pensacola. Mm-hmm. The advisor's in the middle. He's He has work hours. He goes, hey, I'll meet you during lunch or a Zoom call. Neither of you have to leave your office. Mm-hmm. And we'll we'll do your annual review. Any questions? Oh, you want a new account opened? Here's the DocuSign. Sign, sign it. Mo- money's Easy. moved out. Yeah, done. That's great. That's way more convenient for the client and for you. Everybody. Saves, saves Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's that's cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, and there's so many. We could talk <laughs> about business processes all day. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> um, that's something that we really in, enjoy and um, I get excited about. As far as um, well, we had talked before recording just about a couple of different things I wanted to dive into. I think I'm going to switch tracks um, and just ask you personally. Um, we've kind of touched on some retirement stuff, but what mistakes do you see people making as far as preparing for their retirement? Um, that you know, if you could, if you could stop people on the street and tell them, "Hey, don't do this," what would that look like? Um, it's a good question. Um, uh, it's so a broad it, question. Yeah, too. it's a broad <laughs> question. Uh, Time is your biggest factor. As soon as you have extra money that you could set aside, I, I don't care if it's twenty five dollars a month or fifty dollars a month. Yeah, um, you don't have to wait till you have a thousand dollars of excess money to put away every month. Mm-hmm. You start at twenty five or fifty, uh, and start as soon as you get your first job. Hmm. Uh, you know, if the company offers a four hundred one k, possibly uh, participate in it and that. There's some other questions that w- within there, sure. um, but with again, social media is a great thing and a, and a negative thing also. With <laughs> with you know, from Fox Business to CNBC to Bloomberg uh, to all the YouTube channels you can find, uh, you know, the internet is a wonderful thing, and there's almost too much information out there because it's just simply going to overwhelm you. It, the, the the bad thing that I see when I have people that come in and, and Perfect example. I, I made this comment to you during lunch. People come to see me typically for two reasons. Some type of triggering event has happened. Mm-hmm. Somebody died, divorce, 
inheritance, somebody died, uh, and, and transition in life. Oh no, I'm 60 and the, our company just got bought out and we're all fired. Mm. You know, here's your six month severance, here's your 401k, mm. have a good day. Mm. Uh, okay, now what? Huge yeah. changes. Uh, yeah. I had talk about this morning. I had a fire hose of information. I had a friend of mine, unfortunately, died over the weekend, mm. uh, who's, as best I can figure, is probably four or five years younger than I am. Mm. Uh, and, wow. and I'll be 50 this year, so I'm not old. Uh, at, at least I don't think I'm old. No. <laughs> um, I was going to make a joke about it. Probably <laughs> better not. <laughs> uh, but I had a friend of mine who I served with in the military uh, pass away over the weekend. I'm not really sure why, but it's irrelevant. So I have a client of mine who, a very good friend of mine, we also served together. He sent me an email this morning, who just re- and he just retired from the Navy, and I've already been working with him for the last few years. And he goes, hey, we need to talk now, especially about life insurance, especially with so-and-so passing away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The triggering event, I, I saw what happened to my neighbor, uh, his wife, when he passed away, she was not set up. And within six months, she had to sell, had to, not wanted to, had to sell the house, leave, downsize, go move in with the kids. Yeah. Uh, not wanted to, had to. Yeah. And th- that's a big difference. And so it's kind of that wake up call. Yes. Yeah, hey. so, yeah. So that's, t- unfortunately, that's, that's a law. A lot of people that want to get referred to me through, uh, either clients or acquaintances is because they're talking, they go, Hey, do you know anybody? And they go, yeah, I have an advisor, go talk to Fanoi. But it's probably something has triggered within their life. They got divorced. They don't like their husband's using the financial advisor. Mm -hmm. She wants all her money away from them. Yeah. And I mean, it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the biggest thing is time start as soon as soon as you have, you know, Hey, I, I do have $25 or $50 left over at the end of the month. I can live without this money mm-hmm. and start up an automatic, you know, you know, automatic withdrawal out of your checking account on the first, 15th, whatever, however you get paid and start that as soon as you possibly can. Cause eventually sooner or later, you're going to wake up, you know, turn around and you're going to be like, wow, where did that come from? Yeah. Because you don't notice the 10% gain on $100 because it's 10 bucks. I would throw away 10 bucks tomorrow because we walk into Starbucks. Yeah. But then you have 100,000 and 10,000 and it goes up 10%. And you're like, whoa, that's, that's a significant that, that's, amount of money now. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's pretty. And, and, and of course it keeps compounding you know, as you as you grow, as you pay off bills, if you have debts, your income increases. Uh, but again, you start early, Understand what you're putting your money into, and you don't have to know the, the nuances of it. But the, the, what really, what almost furates me, is people will come in and they'll have a 401k. I go, is I they go, well, we have 401k at work. Awesome, great. Is it a traditional or a Roth? I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how, do you, how do you not know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Now, so this is the difference. I'm tradition. feeling bad now because, yeah. oh, well, I don't have one. So I yeah. guess I'm, I'm allowed to pass, but I don't even know the difference between a traditional and Roth. I think so, I did at one time. So a traditional IRA is pre-tax earnings. So the money goes in, uh, you make 100000 you put 10000 in your 401k, the government taxes you as if you only made $90,000. So you get a tax savings for this year. Hmm. So, Interesting. So... So there's that. And so the money grows to your 50, uh, you, you put it into an investment, the 401k to whatever mutual funds are within that, whoever you're with. And those are many, uh, you can't touch it to your 59 and a half. Mm-hmm. Actually, as of this past January of 2020, they changed the new rule of pulling the mar- money out called RMBs requiring min- minimum distributions. And that starts now. And what was it? Seventy and a half. Now it's seventy-two. So at seventy-two, mm-hmm. you must, you shall, start pulling out a certain percentage, and it's a mathematical okay. figure. Mm-hmm. And but you have to, whether you need the money or not, you will pull the money out, or there is a significant penalty, and we're going to make you pull it out and still tax you. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you're going to take it. Uh, take your money. Take your take money. Take your money back. Take your money. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of people. You start getting out to those ages are like. I don't need the money. And yeah. they're like, you're going to take it. Yeah. Like, All right. <laughs> so Roth is, um, 
you receive your money, you've already been taxed on it, and then it goes into your 401k. So you've already paid taxes on it. It grows tax-free, and it can stay in there to your 100 hmm. and just keeps growing. Interesting. Uh, so, but when the money comes out, oh, I, and I missed this part, is for the traditional when it does come out, when you do start taking your RMDs or if you turn 60 and want to start pulling out, it's taxes, ordinary income. The Roth, when it comes out, it's tax-free. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so you pay taxes going in. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Yeah, so so the, there's a uh, – and we, we have uh, – uh, there's a book and you know, I mentioned it to you, The Power of Zero by David McKnight. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we, we, and we've kind of partnered with him here in the Pensacola area uh, to be one of his advisor reps here. And we advocate, and and he does a great job in that book. And there's many other authors out there that do the same thing. Is we're advocating that taxes are going up in the future. We look at the national debt. We look at 10,000 baby boomers a day are retiring, taking Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And you look at where we're at in the tax column from where taxes have been in the past to where they're at now, Mm -hmm. they could double and still not be at the top marginal rate Mm -hmm. of where they've been at before. So 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 we'd rather pay taxes on it now. So pay it now while you're in a low tax rate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And and, and that's that's a lot of pushback from a lot of people because everybody keeps hearing, well, uh, take the tax savings today. Take you yeah. know, let me take a tax break today. I'm already paying a lot of taxes. And we sit there and go, okay, well, you have three kids at home, which are double whammy because you get a tax credit and a tax uh, deduction for them. You you have a mortgage, maybe you're writing off, you're item, itemizing, uh, you're participating in your 401k, so you're getting a tax break there also. So once you do retire, the house is paid down, the kids are. Even if they're still living with you, don't get to keep claiming them because they're of the age of majority. Mm. And so now you turn around and in retirement are more than likely going to be in a higher, the same, if not the higher tax bracket than you were before. Even if your situation is the same. Yeah. Mm. And so, <laughs> and, and then let's be really morbid. Once one of you passes away of the two parents, typically if we're talking about dual income or two, uh, husband and wife, uh, what happens to the other partner? They now be, get taxed as if they're single. Mm. Well, their income is not going to get cut in half, typically, especially if they were preparing f- properly. Mm-hmm. So now their tax rate has just gone through the roof. Mm. So so we try to look at all aspects. Go, all right, we're, we're taking you from here all the way out to 95, yep. 100 years of age, So and, and make sure that your after-tax income is maintaining your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we see a lot of people, when they start looking into retirement – they, they know what they want to retire from. I'm tired of this nine-to-five job. I hate my boss. I got passed over for promotion. I'm ready to leave. That's the classic. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. We were watching some teenager movie or something the other day, and all of them, is this guy wakes up, and he's got a nine-to-five that he hates and a family that he doesn't enjoy. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> why is everybody, that's what, like you yeah. said, that's what everybody wants to retire from. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. And, but they don't know what they want to retire to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and especially now with with uh, health and everything else, you, you're going to spend 25, 30 years in retirement. That, you know, So we have a lot of school teachers who are our clients. Well, what do you think they do for you know September to May, they're, May mm-hmm. June, they're, they're working unbelievable hours. But then from July to yeah, end of August, off. guess when they spend all their money? <laughs> they're in summertime when yeah. they're off. Yep, yep. I'll bet. Well, now you're on vacation 52 weeks out of the year. You got filled up. There's only so much golf people typically can play. So what what where are you gonna do? So so even if that's a a, a blurred retirement, like hey, all right, I'm a, I'm gonna quit working, but I'm gonna do some consulting, or I'm gonna pick up a a hobby that's uh, or, or uh, uh, wherever your passion is, you're gonna take up, you know, say, you know, go feed the homeless, or I mean, wherever your sure. your charitable intentions are. So you, you have to understand what you want to do once you do retire. And your spouse needs to be on the same page mm-hmm. as you because that will also bring up some tensions. Because now you're, sure it does, you're yeah. now sitting at the house all day long looking at each other. <laughs> yeah, how everybody hey. feels about quarantine. Mm-hmm. That's hey. retirement. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, a- absolutely. Absolutely. It, it was, I, th- I think I mentioned this to you. Quarantine was actually pretty good for my business. I, I'm sorry for everybody listening. That it wasn't. <laughs> uh, it, but... You know, everybody got locked down, so they cleaned out the garage, they cleaned out the attic. Then they're sitting there going through their finances. And go, 
hey, let's start fixing this up or yeah. start consolidating yeah. because especially younger people, uh, you know, this isn't the generation two generations ago when you work went to work for one company for 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. That does not Very happen. different. That does not, for 90% of us, that does not happen yeah. anymore. Um, I was kind of unique because I was in the military for 25 years, but I mean, it, it, it starts changing. Uh, but for the vast majority of us, especially youngers, you're going to go work for a company for four or five years, quit, go work for another one, go work for another one, go. For, and then you turn around, you're 40, 45 years old, and you have a half dozen 401k statements that you're getting every month mm-hmm. going, what are, what is all this, what are they doing? I have no idea. Yeah, it's clear. Uh, so, so, you know, we try to clean that up or, and do a good job of cleaning that up and try to consolidate everything if that's in the best interest of the client and uh, put their mind at ease of what they're trying to do and, and what their goals are. Hmm. You know? That's interesting. That's good advice as far as um, understanding, you know, the different types of, of, um, 401ks or, or investments for or towards retirement and understanding what you want to retire to, not just retire from. Yeah. All I'm hearing is you, you should probably go talk to somebody who understands money a little bit better than you, <laughs> you know, go yeah. talk to an, a financial advisor and sure. Um, Cause you're bringing up things that I've never even thought about before, yeah. you know? So yeah, it, it, it can be very, I mean, I, I really like, you know, listen to the podcast, uh, l- listen, to, I'm trying to do a thing The military tried to get me into this rhythm called the battle rhythm. So, so you're doing the exact same thing every single day. You get up at the same time. You, you do the exact, you know, get up, go work out, come home, meditate, spend an hour reading a book, mm-hmm. doing whatever you want to do, you know, but you have to have personal goals and uh, professional goals. Yeah. And, you know, and we're actually, do, we're doing that actually on Monday mornings you know, with our team is, uh, you know, how to build better habits, how to, how to be more um, uh, uh, dedicated to the, to, to doing each step. And f- did you make all the follow-up calls that you were supposed to make up or did, did you only do three quarters of them? Yep. Oh, I did three quarters of them. All right. Yeah. And if you, you got to be honest too in those sessions, cause yeah. that's the point, you yeah. know, yeah. but yeah. if you're not even having those follow-up, you know, that accountability, then it's definitely not going to be happening. You know, yeah. it, it's, it can be, uh, you know, so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of audible and, and some podcasts. So I, I try, I try, <laughs> as best as I can, you know, listen hour a day to, you know, something that if it's not work related, it's, it's communication. Uh, a big portion of this job is behavioral finance. It's pulling people off the ledge. It's, uh, getting people to understand what certain accounts are for. Uh, I was very fortunate, uh, because of my clientele, the bulk of them are, uh, essential personnel. That are either active duty, retired, police, school teachers. None of them lost paychecks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some of the business owners had to cut back, but they all stayed within their realm. So they were all still contributing money during the downturn. So when the market turned south hard, I had a couple that reached out to me, and, and fortunately, I did a good job of coaching them that hey, when the market's down, that is, and this is your retirement account, you're not touching it for 30 years. Mm-hmm. That means the markets are on sale. So if you have extra money, let's put it in there. Yeah. This is a great time. You know, if you if you go to the store and the, and you see 40 percent off, well, if the stock is 40 percent off, and but you still buy believe it. in it, yeah, buy it. Mm-hmm. So I had actually, I'm very proud. I had a couple of young, young single guys that I'm uh, coaching, and, and they reached out to me. and go, "Hey, the market's down. I, I have a thousand dollars saved up. Let's All do right. it. All right, let's put put, cool. it, put it to work." Uh, so, so that I was really, and then I started cold calling a lot of my clients. Go, "Hey, the market's down." All right. <laughs> and and I was very and and a got a great response from a number of them, and to where they were starting maxing out stuff. They go, "All right, hey, we're ready to max. Go ahead and max out our Roth for the year or do whatever." So, so that was good uh, and very beneficial for everybody. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good to hear. And, I mean, that's everybody knows you, you want to buy low and sell high. That's And, and nobody does. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, well, the problem is it's kind of – I feel like some of it may be panic. Yeah. Whenever the market's down, it's like that's when you want to kind of conserve and retract. And, sit you know, tight. Yep, sit tight, exactly. Yeah. Write it out. Yeah, it, it, it's – um, it, there's a – Dalbar and there's a few others that that monitor actually how investors actually truly invest. They sit there and watch the and 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 we can sit there and look at it. I mean, you can sit in, from the 07, 08, 09 crash, 07, 08, 
and then this downturn a few months ago or even 2000, 2001, when the market plummeted, you can see literally trillions flowing out of equities going into bonds or debt securities or cash. Why? They should be doing just the opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Warren Buffett said, you know, be greedy when other people are fearful and be fearful when other people are greedy. Yep, that's what I was thinking of. It, it, it's and, and my job, hopefully, if I can relay it to my clients is, you know, hey, you're 40, you're not retiring for 20 years. What do you care what your 401k is doing or, or your Roth's doing? Yeah, just don't even look account? at it. Don't even don't, worry about yeah, it. Yeah, don't we'll look at it in six more months. <laughs> uh, and then it's right back to where it was. Mm. Um so it's it's so it's my job to hopefully coach the person through that time period when they're like, ah, oh, we need to sell everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, man, this has been a, a we got a lot of good content in here, yeah. um, and I feel like there's a lot more that we could definitely unpack, and we'll have you on at some point in the future. I'm I'm sure of it. Oh, um, awesome. So my last question would be, well, two questions. First of all. What's next for you? I mean, do you have any, what are some of your professional goals and what are you looking down the road at, at accomplishing? Um, well, that's a broad question too. Uh, so I, uh, I have some designations I'm working on. I'm probably eventually going to go for um, one of the two big ones, the survive uh, financial planner or, or the other one. And I forget the designation for that one right at the moment off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah. It is like four letters. Um, I'm working on one right now. Hopefully, I'll, I'll have that done at the end of the month. And then uh, my long-term goal is, uh, I'm, I'm like you, I, I like real estate. So my my envision of greatness and gander is uh, to, uh, <laughs> a grandeur is to uh, have my own building built and move the office into there and rent out and sublet everything else uh, and, and Interesting. move Riverside into a bigger building. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, uh, yeah. See, see if I can get. Gotta have it. goals though. Yeah, lofty, yeah. lofty goals. Yeah, it, it's a. Uh, oh, I was reading something that said, um, "We're." Uh, I wish I could recall the book that they uh, that they sent me that I started working on this weekend for for the, and it's a weekly journal you're supposed to be working on and and so you're, it goes okay set your goals for the year what you know what goals do you want to set. And they go shoot for the ninety percentile. You know, the old saying, you know, if you aim low and hit, you're yeah. really messed up. Yeah. You know, aim aim high. You know, shoot for the stars. If you hit the moon, yeah, you, you, you still hit the moon. Still you hit, yeah, 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 yeah. It still went up. You know, shoot, shoot for the ninety percentile. No, so so, um, I simply build my book of business. It's a. Uh, uh, th we are completely independent, so all my clients are my clients. You know, I I own them. Uh, so it's, it's a, uh, you know, I, I want to pick up more clients. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a number of things with, uh, some local nonprofits and, uh, some crews that I'm working with, hmm. um, a shout for crew of SWAT that I'm part of. And, uh, so we're doing some stuff with them. And so hopefully get my name more out into the community. Uh, again, get, get people to know me. They like me. They trust me. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I then can benefit from them knowing that mm -hmm. and uh just continue to grow my practice exciting well that's that's cool we'll yeah. we'll hold your feet to the fire on, on the building <laughs> in a few years we'll make sure that you're getting that done absolutely <laughs> that's absolutely. cool okay so then my last question is where where can people find more about you would you prefer us to send them to to linkedin or, or social media uh yeah uh so you can go to our, our web page uh riversidewa.com uh and find it, all of us and look at all the team members uh and we have some articles there and the only place i'm doing my social media for me personally is on linkedin that's right because um, the rules are pretty strict. yeah I, i'm probably going to just go ahead and pull the trigger and build a facebook page and, and then add it to the uh I have to pay people to monitor my mm -hmm. LinkedIn page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so I'm probably going to just end up doing it. Uh, but Riverside has a Facebook page, Twitter account okay. uh, on their own. Uh, so I'm probably just going to end up creating mine also and just doing them both. Mm -hmm. uh, I, again, it's the platform. I mean, there, there's just so many more people on yeah. Facebook than, yeah. than LinkedIn. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it's all what you, you – know, yeah. Who's it's your target whole, audience? It's a whole you know, different yeah. animal. Facebook yeah, is. Yeah, no, you know? absolutely. I'm is. just thinking like we have it really easy. I can go on Facebook and post whatever I want, whenever yeah. I want. Yeah. So no, um, no, I don't. Say yeah. Anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't do yeah. Oh man. 
<laughs> well, that's cool. Fenoy, I really, I appreciate you jumping on and you're just an outgoing guy. And I feel like you're, you're good at expounding on a lot of the, the topics that we talked about. And I feel like mm-hmm. you provided really a lot of value for the people listening. So yeah. I appreciate you jumping on. All right. I certainly appreciate you. Thank yeah. you for having me. Absolutely. Yes.